Uh, hey guys, so I'm here in uh, coastal Louisiana, um, southern Louisiana, at one of our restoration sites, um, Woodlands, what we now call Woodlands Preserve. And so um, some of the key themes that uh, we've been talking about uh, in our class um, and or we'll be talking about, how do we do management? Uh, how do we set conservation goals? How do we deal with rarity? How do we deal with um, uh, balancing uses um, of, of, in this case, mostly recreation and conservation, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is a great um, representation of a lot of those challenges. So the issues here um, are we struggle with and are still working on is what should our conservation target be? What should the management goal be? We, we, have, we, we definitely have ideas and we, we can articulate those, but, but over time we're wondering if we need to adjust those. And so with most good conservation things, you don't just want to have something that is never returned to, but we have something and then over time we go back to it and say, hey, does this still make sense? And not to abandon our initial goals, but maybe we need to modify things. Or maybe there's stuff we didn't realize, problems we didn't realize that we need to um, adapt to. Um, in the case here, one of, one of our big issues are, is this guy, which is this invasive, uh, which uh, in general we have a problem with invasive species coming, and now this area has been disturbed, potentially threatening to take over this place and change the, the ecosystem and change the, the functions and values that this uh, system provides. Um, and so, so there is no perfect playbook for how you get rid of um, uh, invaders like this that are very prolific, have a, a huge seed set, a lot of, lot of seed bank. Um, and so we've been experimenting over the years of ways to control this. So monitoring is key to this so that we understand the state of our forest. So that, that's, a, that's always important. We always need to have monitoring, whatever the, the management issue that we're talking about is. But then two, um, trying different approaches to, 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 to repairing the composition of the forest. So maybe it's really, really aggressive invas invader control. Maybe it's doing something to the soils. So all that kind of stuff we've been experimenting with over the years, trying plantings of different sizes of, of native trees, things of that nature. So that's also something that might change your, your, your actions. And then of course, the third thing is what's changing with the overall setting, the overall environment. So we've been talking about things like fragmentation and all these issues which are, which are going on in this um, remnant parcel of forest that used to be hugely contiguous. We used to be able to go from here to the Gulf of Mexico, and which is south of us, and go basically 60 miles before we hit like really open water, what we consider ocean, open ocean water. Now it's about 14 miles because of the loss of wetlands, because of the, the, the degrading of the overall ecosystem. So that's it, that's the biggest issue for us. But then also overlaid on that, and with all of our sites, all the things you guys might be thinking about or interested in or work or want to work on, climate change, right? So the Anthropocene overall. Um, and all the aspects of the Anthropocene, uh, uh, pollution, um, uh, fragmentation, uh, uh, rare things becoming rarer, um, things that aren't supposed to be here, um, uh, new processes, new species coming in, all that's going on. And so that also is th those changing things, getting hotter, getting drier, getting wetter, getting colder, all these, all these issues are also something we need to grapple with in terms of the management, the conservation of these resources. So this uh, site, Woodlands um, Preserve, is a great example of this in, in real world practice that our colleagues at, at, at Woodlands Conservancy, our NGO partners, are grapple with every single day and folks are employed every single day to try to figure this out and, uh, and we try to help as much as possible, but, but they really are uh, day in, day out trying to solve these issues. Engage the public, show them the value and worth of this particular site um, and, and get their support as well as securing funding and fundraising and all that kind of other stuff. And, and educating the public generally so they, they see this as theirs and they, they have ownership and value of this area. Um, and so all of that are go into the mix. And so all this is going on simultaneously. So when you look at these types of um, um, uh, coastal conservation challenges, um, there's, there's a huge number of ways you can plug in and a huge need for this and, and similar sites all around the planet. Um, some people are fantastic educators, cool. Some people are fantastic uh, botanists, cool. Some people are great in the field and, and, and cutting down blackberry and doing that kind of stuff. Cool. Some people are great with geospatial skills, so making these high resolution maps and figuring out what's going on. Some are fantastic drone pilots that help us manage and, and look at how things are changing over time um, and so on and so forth. So there's a ton of places you can engage with these conservation challenges and Woodlands uh, Preserve here is just one fantastic example where it all kind of comes together and it's easy to see all of this here in southern Louisiana.